Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions – Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love Group and is part of the Education and Love series. In the Welcome and Housekeeping presentation, Jesus welcomes the participants to the Assistance Group and outlines the general plan for the program, along with providing some general principles for participants to follow. Recorded on the 4th of March 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. All right, well, perhaps we can close those back doors if that's okay. Um. <coughs> it's the sound of the man working on the chain gang. <laughs> This is what you go like at the end, you <laughs> so too much. No, it's not like that. You won't, you'll be fine. You don't need to worry. However, you, uh, we, we do you know, obviously want to help you break through with some, some change in your life. So obviously, you know, a lot of what's said might challenge you. So, so that, but that's normal, isn't it? When you come to, you should be used to that now with me, shouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you guys, I'd like to firstly just welcome you to here, actually. Um, without you guys, obviously, there would be no presentation. Although that's probably not true because we were going to have a presentation at home in the studio if no one rocked up. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd still present. Our goal was uh, basically. It was going to be like if, if, if there were less than 40 people, then we would have uh, 20 people in the studio uh, and we'd do sort of some kind of thing there. And if there were less than 20 people, then we'd have myself and Mary in the studio <laughs> <laughs> discussing the information. And uh, if there were more than, you know, the capacity of this hall, which is 70, um, then we would have to have two groups. And as it's turned out, the, each group's full. So, so there's been 140 uh, come to this first session, uh, 70 of them, of course, last week. And, and uh, so, you know, what, what that's meant is that you guys have firstly paid for myself and Mary and Lena and Igor to be here and also paid for the venue and paid for um, our accommodation as well. So we'd like to thank you for that in terms of you doing that for us. Um, we... We also have had donations which have meant that we've been able to purchase a bit of extra equipment so that if our current equipment breaks down, it will be a very short turnover, you know, maybe a half an hour or so before we plug in some other things to get it up and running again. But we wouldn't have to cancel the event. So, so that's been fantastic. And we'd like to thank Eloisa and Peter Litton Hitchens for donating that um, money to us to enable us to do that. We'd also like to thank um, Raj and Suzanne, many of you know Raj and Sue, who actually have used this venue since 2003 for different events and they're the people who put us onto the venue. And as it's worked out, we, we had some different requirements than they've had, so we had to approach the management of the venue and talk about our requirements with them because we didn't know how many of you would be coming and therefore we didn't know... We had to create sort of cut-off dates as to when we could... Um, when they had to be let know that, that the event would be going ahead and so forth. And they were really, really cooperative. And in fact, the venue has been excellent for us. And, uh, and I'm sure any of you who are staying here will find it quite comfortable and enjoyable while you're here. Who is staying on, the, on site? Um, yep, yeah, so probably so over half of you at least, yeah. And so I'm sure you will enjoy the experience. It's quite quite a good venue. Myself, I've been staying here now for obviously two weeks, and so has Lena and Igor. And uh, what we did was we came here um, Tuesday before the Friday. It takes us two days to set up the hall, which we did, and then uh, it took me a day or so to get myself into the right mindset uh, to present things to you. And then we started on Friday night, uh, basically a, f a fortnight ago um, with the previous group and and then we worked through to the following Saturday which was just last Saturday when we last Saturday night we finished with that group and they all left Sunday 
And then myself, uh, Lena and Igor, we had different things to do here, which we did Thursday, uh, yesterday, and uh, setting up the venue again. Uh, but between that time, we had three days off. Well, well sort of three days off. Uh, the guys had to have had some car troubles they had to resolve, and I had some uh, business issues we had to be resolved. So, so um, it meant that you know we get about a day or two off, and then when we're into it again. And uh, and as I said, Mary won't be joining us in the group. So you you will see her probably at the end. She's probably going to come over on the last Saturday. So you will, might see her then. But aside from that, you have to put up with my pretty face the whole time. But hope, hopefully it's pretty enough for you to cope with it. <laughs> um, yeah, we'd also um, like to thank uh, Corny for doing our videoing for us, because uh, uh, he's done it already the whole last week. And, uh, and as you know, standing up for six hours straight, uh, trying to get video shots can be quite exhausting after a while. So, um, so Corny's over there in the corner. Corny's in the corner. <laughs> Thanks, mate. And we'd like to also thank Lena and Igor, um, obviously, because they're going to be doing most of our work for us. Now you notice uh, Igor is over there in the in little, little cubicle, basically, uh, yeah. and he's trying to get it, the right video shot for us. And what that means is that when you're asking a question of some kind, uh, Corny will try to get a shot of you. Now, if you can't see his camera, then it means he can't see you. And so, what we would like you to do is to stand up, right, and then ask your question. Is that okay? So, so if you just stand up, and remember when you use your microphones, you want to hold the microphone nice and close, because because Eagle's already got a lot to do. He doesn't also need to keep on going across to the uh, audio to try and adjust the audio to get your audio up. He's already doing a lot of video switching. There are six cameras that he's switching uh, between, and it takes a bit of concentration. So it would be great if you can help us by making sure that we don't have to worry about your sound. Does that make sense? So if you could just be conscious when you ask a question that you're speaking nice and close into the microphone like that, and also that you can see Corny, and if you can't, stand up so that he can get a shot of you. Does that make sense? And then you'll be able to see your own pretty faces later on and I know many of you don't like that but that's you know this is how it goes uh, you'll be able to see your own face uh, in the future in the future videos that we do obviously all of these will be going up on the internet so so we're looking forward to getting them all up it'll be 64 hours of material and it will be your your sessions will although they'll have a similar topics or, or of conversation, they will obviously be bent around your particular needs to a degree. So both sessions will be a little different from each other because of that reason. And so uh, it will be 64 hours of material on how to develop my will to love. And, and to us, this is, one of the, this is the most important subject for the introductory process of these Education in Love series of discussions. Um, okay, so I can now pass this to whoever Joy's got as the alternate. Now, with those microphones, what we'd like to ask is there's about, there's close to 70 people here. If you look at it, there's 32, there's actually 32 hours of presentation, and most of the presentations are one hour long. So that means there's 32, basically 32 uh, one hour stints. Now, if you think about it, if each of you used the roving mic once, if, and there's two roving mics, then that would be 64 people. So what we would like to do is have a different person have the mi microphone for one hour at, the t at a time serving everyone else. Does that sound all right with you guys? And that means that in the end, there'll only be a few people who miss out on that. And our suggestion is obviously that those of you with children here or whatever, you might, uh, you know, if we can 
we can give them a special pass to not have to do that. And, and, uh, but if everyone else could be involved in that process, that would be fantastic. But you just need to bear in mind that not to walk in front of the cameras, because if, and particularly this main camera, the other ones we can sort of work around, but this main camera here, if you make sure that you don't walk in front of that. Ben, you wanted to ask? Do you need a second mic tonight? Yeah, we'll use both mics tonight. Does anyone, can I do this one or is a? Well, um, do you want to do it? Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah? yeah. no, that'll be fine. Yeah. And who's got the other one tonight? Joy has from last week, so, yep. So, we'll now what we'd like you to do is to organise that yourselves, but uh, obviously Igor will help you out. Um, you'll need to grab your microphones from him before the start of each group. So, so if you haven't done it, just find out whether it's ready to go and, and offer your services. If you have done it, you can sit down and relax and not have to do it ever again. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So how do you feel being here? You're gonna be you're gonna be fine with it, you think? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a you'll I feel that you'll learn a lot about that you've heard of, many of you have heard a lot of information in the past, right? But what I also feel is that many of you still are struggling to put it all together in terms of what to do with that information. And so what we're hoping to do through with this Education in Love series of talks is to help you put it all together and, and to join, join the dots in such a way that you can actually make some progress in your, in your life and particularly in your life in regards to uh, learning and, and also feeling more in harmony with love. So this is our, going to be our focus. Now the presentations we've done are like I said about 30 to 32 hours for each session and there's eight of those so obviously we're doing around 250 hours of material that will be presented to you over the next two and a half years. We've decided to do it um, in, th in three blocks every year because we felt that there's a number of uh, obviously limitations that everyone has. There's work issues and there's also how to get a week of time off so that you can actually uh, get to them and, thing and things like that. So, so we decided to, even though we were keen to do them all in one year, <laughs> um, we decided to split them all out over three years, uh, for, or two and a half years it works out to be, for that reason. So we've spread out 250 hours of teaching material over two and a half years and in this, in this program we've structured the program in such a way that if you stick with the program until the end that you'll have everything you need to know about developing your, your relationship with God and, and gaining an edu or beginning the education in love. So I'd, so I'd call this your kindergarten course in love. All right. And obviously there's a lot more things we could present to you and a lot more detail about different subjects we could give you. But, but this is the, I feel, the beginning of most people's education in love. And, and what we want to do is create it as a resource, not only for yourselves, but also for anybody in the future who also wants to develop themselves in, in love as well. So, so we're looking forward to being able to provide an, uh, that material and looking forward also to getting the material up so that many thousands of other people can also look at the material. So you're the guinea pigs for all the others as well. So isn't that, that's great really, that you've offered yourself in that regard, even though that you might not have considered yourself doing that at the time. <laughs> yeah. All right, so... What we'd like to do now, though, is just go through a few basic things about, about love in terms of the venue, um, ourselves, and, uh, and so forth. Obviously, um, Lena and Igor, Cornelius, myself, are all gifting you our time. And this means that we would like you to be mindful of fa the fact that you're actually receiving a gift and therefore can't really demand more from us than we're already giving. And many of you will be tempted to do that in this in this, this in these discussions over the next uh, eight days, and and my suggestion to you is no, you need to start learning 
to take this information and settle with it and also pray a lot about it and develop the relationship with God rather than being reliant on us. But we are giving you the gift and we're hopeful that, that you will receive it as it's intended, in the, as a gift of love. But, but if you decide that you're going to treat us badly in any way, then obviously we're not going to tolerate that. So we're, we're not going to tolerate an argument with us, for example, during the sessions. We're not going to tolerate uh, what I would classify as unloving behaviour to, to others in the venue, to ourselves, uh, or even to the venue itself. So we'd like you to think about, you're here for the week to learn about developing your will to love. So this is a great, great uh, opportunity for you to look for opportunities to develop your will to love uh, during, the, during the week. And, and we would like you to engage that particular process. We would also like you to consider things like um, arriving on time and, and not, you know, not sort of arriving late. We'd also like you all to have your mobile phones either turned off or, or if you're recording with them, which, which, you're, which it's okay for you to do, um, put it in um, flight mode or something, but also please turn off your Wi-Fi because your Wi-Fi will interfere with some of our UHF equipment. So what we'd like you to make sure with your mobile phones that you turn the Wi-Fi connection off and you put it in airplane mode if you're going to use it for recording of the sound. Um, there will be recordings of this afterwards. Now, obviously, that's going to take us a little bit of time. There's uh, 64 hours total of editing that the guys, uh, Lena and Igor, will be doing. And normally it takes three to four hours per hour that we record. So we're talking 250, you know, around about 200 hours or, or so potentially of work. And we're going to need to try to get that out as rapidly as possible because um, obviously people who are coming to the next thing in the series need to look at this material before they come to the next one in the series. So our goal is to try and get those out within four weeks of leaving here. So there's a lot of work to be done um, to get this material out. And, uh, and what we do with our material now is we actually send it directly to the US uh, where a friend of mine there plugs it into his server and then I remotely control that server to upload to YouTube and upload to our Canadian server. And the reason why we do it that way is that if we had to upload uh, these kind of events from Australia, they would take weeks to months of time to do it, whereas I can do it overnight in one night once I, he receives the discs over there and it only takes six days for the disk to get there so so i can so i can actually send the data to the us and upload it three times quicker than i can actually upload it from australia <laughs> so that gives you a bit of an idea of how fast <laughs> overseas people have their internets particularly in the us and um this means then that we can get material up faster uh, but obviously uh, to do that, there's quite a lot of work that we have to do, editing and in, in post-production with the sound and the video. So that's what the guys will be doing. So, so their work only really begins at, this, at these groups and there's a lot of work afterwards uh, that needs to be done. And because of that, um, we won't be probably setting up our studio before the next uh, group of assistance group, the Developing My Loving Self ones, the, the next uh, groups of the session of the series, uh, we probably won't be setting up our, uh, our stuff at home uh, in between because, because by the time we've set it up, we have to dismantle it all again and bring it all back. So, so, and also it takes myself and Mary around about a month of, uh, you know, eight hours a day, five days a week to prepare these groups. So uh, that's for each group. So. Um, obviously, we'll be spent, when we finish here, we're straight into the next one. And so you can see there's quite, quite a busy year ahead of us in terms of all of our production. At the end of this year, there will already be uh, over a, probably 190 to 200 hours of material on the internet just from the one year. That's without what we do in between. And we will be doing some things in between after the second ser series of groups. So don't think that we're going to be able to do a whole heap of things in between because there's a whole hell of work for us to do 
as a part of these groups. But uh, we've been thinking that they're necessary because many of you, we feel, are very stuck and, and quite confused about applying some of the principles that you've learnt in the past and we'd like to help you get unstuck. So, so that's why we'd like to go through some of this material with you. Now Mary's left me, Mary would normally be doing this session with you, so she's left me some notes. Um, she wants uh, you to be care for the recording. Um, so as I've pointed out, we're recording all of these sessions and that means we want the sound to be as good as we can possibly get it, the video to be as good as we can possibly get it and that's going to require some of your cooperation by you know, making sure you hold the mic nice close up and making sure that if you can't see Cornelius then that you, that you stand up so that he can see you and we can get proper shots then. So we're hopeful that we'll get a fairly good uh, quality of sound in particular but also video so that when they are uploaded to the to the net um, every, everything will be nice and clear and pleasant to listen to for other people who uh, who are not here and they'll get a picture of here in the process um, so I might po just point out that l what Igor is doing is actually live editing so we actually do a lot of our editing now while it's actually happening and, and the more he can do now and get right now, the less he has to do later on. Does that make sense? But there's still other work that needs to be done with sound and so forth. But we'd ask you to not talk particularly to Igor while he's working, <laughs> if that's all right. Um, because he's already got enough on his plate and, uh, and if you're talking to him as well, then it quite often will distract him from, from what, you know, what, he want, what, he, what we would like to have done. I've talked to you about the usage of the microphones. I've talked to you about hiding from the video camera. <laughs> and I've talked to you about volunteering for the microphones. We've talked to you about how to use the microphones. Remember, Mary's also written down here, care for all the presenters. Now, the presenter is one presenter, so it's just me. Remember, I'm talking four to six hours every day. I don't... I can't have additional conversations. I've still got to do my own cooking, cleaning <laughs> and, and everything else in between in the, in the days, as well as have enough voice space left for the next day. So, so we've got plenty of uh, question and answer sessions. You can also put up your hand during our normal sessions, as long as the question that you're asking is associated with the subject at hand. Does that make sense? I do not want to hear from you all of your own personal experiences when you ask questions. I would like to hear from you specific questions on the subject at hand and asking about the principles involved because you can always apply the principle to many situations. Whereas when you get involved just telling the story, it's only your story and I know many of you are addicted to doing this, but, it, but it's not actually helpful to you. So, so we'd like you to stay away from your stories and stay on topic. Does that make sense? With your questions and your answers. Um, at the end of the day, we have a request, and that is uh, our job, uh, particularly Igor's job, but also um, Igor and my jobs are not finished, and, and neither is Lena's jobs finished when you finish. So we, what we would ask for you to do is that straight after we've finished the session, if you'd be willing to just clear out the hall as rapidly as possible, then we can get the jobs that we need to get done, done. Now, um, we copy 1.2 terabytes of information every day, uh, right? So, so we have to duplicate. We, we, we don't want to lose that information, so we duplicate it three times. So, we, so not only do we copy it once, but we then store it three more times after that. And that obviously takes uh, some coding to set up and so forth. And we've done all that in prep, but, but Igor's got to first grab all of that 1.2 terabytes and copy it across to the master drive. And then after he's done that, we've then got to run a process that uh, overnight copies it to the other drives. Now, just copying across to the master drive takes a couple of hours, so that means Igor's got to start the process off, 
Uh, Lena's got to get all the camera feeds, all the because every one of the cameras you see, there's ninjas on the cameras. They're called ninjas, the little sort of displays, extra displays you see, and they've got a disc in them. And, and all of our data, video data, gets recorded on that. And then we make a duplicate of that, and then we copy that to these, these raids, and then we distribute that three times so that we've got duplicates of everything. And, and that process obviously takes some time. And so that means that we've got to spend a good half an hour or so after the event immediately. And then the Eagle's got to come back again sort of a few hours later to kick off the overnight process. And so there's, it's not just the time that we're here with you that, that we're working. So if you can just bear that in mind and give us that space at the end of the day that we need to do those jobs, then we won't get behind for the next day. If we, as soon as we get behind one day, then we're sort of, there's not enough time in the night to copy the data. So we need to keep everything flowing. So if you can look after us that way, that'd be fantastic. And Mary also mentions to care for each other. Please make sure you're loving to each other. Please make sure you're not condescending or belittling or arrogant with each other, because that's not loving. And we will remove any person who's unloving to ourselves and other guests or the venue itself. But as I said, uh, if you're here in a sincere, with a sincere desire to develop your will to love, that's probably highly unlikely that's going to happen, isn't it? Um, with those of you with children, if I could just make a few notes for you. There's a lot of dangerous places in the venue. You know, there's obviously three, three pools. There's quite a lot of lagoons. There's... Um, you know, there's a bouncing area that if, if children get on that they can and don't know how to use it, they can hurt themselves and so forth. So you've got to be responsible for your children and know where they are all the time. And so please look after your children in that regard, but also please obey the rules of the resort so that, they, that your children stay safe. And just with regard to children, if they're making a noise here, if you can just be mindful just to take them out because it, otherwise it interrupts everybody else, remember that you will get a recording of this as well. So you'll see the bits that you've missed if you've had to do that anyway. And if you want to have babysitting and so forth, then, then obviously you've had to make your own arrangements about that. We don't, we're not doing that. Um, we have some interesting things afoot with that, but we'll talk to you about them later perhaps. <coughs> now you'll notice uh, on the entryway of the hall that you would have seen this program, which you've already probably seen before when we've put it on. You've put it on the internet. Those of you who've downloaded that, the program's changed a little from the one you've downloaded, but the timings are the you know the time frames are the same. So um, that's our timing. That'll tell you when the sessions start. But basically, if I can go through the sessions and how they work, basically, each two days is called one session. So there's two day, two days, and then two days. And in between each two days, there is a one day break. So you can go down the beach, have a surf, um, have a laze in the sun. But of course, there'll also be homework for that break. So hopefully, you'll remember to do that as well. And we structured it that way because we found that having any more than two days was a bit too much last time for, for many of you. So, so if we just have two days, now the first day is a bit heavier than the second day. So the first day is around about five hours of straight presentation. And the way it's structured is we're starting at 10.30 in the morning and each and then basically hourly thereafter we have a break of 10 minutes. But in the midday, midday break, there's a 20 minutes break. So we go from 10.30 through to around 4.20, I think it is or so, in the first day. And in amongst that, there's 10 minute breaks every hour, so you can go to the toilet. And the toilets, by the way, are out the back door, around the side, around where the uh, server eatery area is, that where Kate was doing her stuff tonight and then walk in the door. We've blocked off the... There was an actual exit here for that, but we've blocked that off because we'd like you to go out and around to the toilet. Does that make sense? So you can just go out and around, and both the male and female toilets are there, uh, uh, just straight through there. Basically, there's a doorway through there. You'll see it if you haven't seen it already. So we'd, we'd like you to take the opportunity to, 
to go to the toilet each hour and there's water up the back so you should be able to drink uh, as much as you want to drink and keep yourself hydrated so that, so that you're fresh every, every hour for our new discussion. Now, most of the discussions do have a Q&A session, um, but not all of them do. Uh, but the majority of them do. So, so basically we'll be presenting you material for one hour and then we have a 10 minute break and then we're presenting you with the opportunity to ask questions on that subject for one hour. And then we go to another subject and so forth. And that's the general process. There is also a... Um, there's two sessions where you can have personal truth or, a group, uh, or group truth. Now, if you'd like to have any personal truth, you'll see there's pink folders right up and back on the left-hand side. There's some pink folders there, and it's labelled Session 1 and Session 2. The Session 1 um, personal truth sessions will be on... So the, the ones Joy's handing up, holding up there, so you can see them. Now, the Session 1... Uh, personal truth sessions will be held on Sunday, this coming Sunday, and and then the session two personal truth sessions will be held on Wednesday. So so it'll just be one hour sessions, and and basically it's just write in the questions that you'd like to ask. Now I do not want you writing in questions associated with other things other than our subject material. So what I'd like you to do is focus on the subject material and ask, ask your question and be as specific as you can. Now, if I find that there's no questions that I feel are specific enough for me to answer, then probably what I'll start doing is just go through very quick references to those who've asked questions, um, just five-minute instances. Um, so in, in the last group, we did a combination of those two things um, in, in our group. So we encourage you to to do similar similar things if and and at least be open to the to the process of getting some feedback if you need it um, now i actually select the people who give feedback and and that will be ha I'll, I'll explain that on the day so you don't need to worry about that very much yep if you've got any questions about that if we go up to meg i was just wondering um can we ask questions apart from the Q&A, like uh, related to what you're saying, or just leave all questions to Q&A? No, as I said, you can ask questions during the discussion, but again, uh, it's very important in the discussion that they are definitely focused on the material, so that you're asking specific questions about the material being presented at the time, and not something that's off track. Does that make sense? And I'll. I'll pulled you into line if that is not the case. Um, but obviously the Q&A, we're a bit more flexible about, uh, you know, how it relates to you and your, day and your personal life, uh, how the information relates to your personal life. Um, we have a homework... Oh, I haven't told you the start of the second day. St the second day starts at 11. So the first day starts at 10.30 of each two-day session. So tomorrow the session will start at 10.30 and the second day will start at 11 o'clock. And, and the second day has four sessions rather than five. So it's a bit shorter because we feel that by then your concentration span is generally already waning and that's generally the case. And so what the last group found was that the sessions were quite good because they, they felt fresh for the first day, they could concentrate a bit longer. By the time they got the second day, the concentration span is a bit down, and they found that you know any longer than what it was would probably be too much. And then having the day off was pretty good too. So it gives you, gets you fresh again, and you're able to get back into the zone of thinking about what you want to ask about and things like that. Now, each one of those two-day sessions has a theme, and we will be talking about those themes. The themes are at the top of the session table, so you actually see them on the list here right at the top. So, you know, obviously those sessions have been pre-publicised, so you know what they are. But we'll, we'll emphasise the theme for each two days as well. Um, so we've talked about the timing. We've talked about your toilet breaks being a maximum of 10 minutes. 
the last time we've had to shorten some of them just to keep on track so sometimes if I'm running a few minutes o over then that means our toilet breaks will be shorter <laughs> and so forth because we've got to try to keep on track because it's so easy for the material to get way you know you, you'd be here at 7 p.m. rather than leaving at 4 4 30 or 4 20 or whatever and we definitely want you to be fresh for the next day as well so that's why we're doing it this way the midday break, uh, which is I think about one uh, one ten on the first day, and about um, let's I'll just I'll just get it. It's, no, it's one thirty, one forty on the first day, and one ten on the second day. Those two breaks are twenty minutes long, so that's enough time to have a bit of fruit or or some, you know just a quick snack or something like that. So feel free to bring along something if you would like to do that. We'd ask you if you can not eat inside the auditorium, but probably given the surroundings, I doubt whether you'd want to eat inside here anyway, given the fact that you're sitting down here otherwise for five hours straight. Um, so I've talked about the mealtime. Oh, there's also uh, where you eat, what you eat, and, where, and when you eat is all up to you, obviously. <laughs> We've left it all up to you. But there are, within walking distance, um, quite a lot of restaurants uh, just down the road. Good luck trying to fi find anything vegan because uh, myself and Mary have had no success doing that except for one vegan shop that only op opened up until 4pm and um, the rest has bits of meat here and bits of stuff in there and whatever and, and none of them have seemed to be very willing to change so you might find that uh, if you're vegan that you probably want to do most of your own food prep. But there are a number of uh, supermarkets nearby. There's one in Tawanton, which is only like a kilometre this direction. And there's one at Nooseville, which is a kilometre or so in that direction. And there's one just up at Noosa itself, another just a kilometre away. So they're all sort of just within, again, a very short distance. And, uh, and so there's plenty of food places available. Felix, you want to ask? Just that, no, wait for the mic, thanks. Ben, thanks. Don't hesitate when they start talking, man. Just let it, just come down still. Oh, sorry, it wasn't that important. Just what's the one up that way? It's at Twanton. That's that's Woolies or? Yeah, oh, I think it's a Woolies or a oh. Coles. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the personal the personal feedback sessions. If I talk a bit more about them. The purpose of them is to give you specific feedback about the subject matter at hand. So, so that's why we're hopeful that it's about the subject matter. They will vary in length. And in, fact, in fact, the longest one at this stage has been about 15 minutes. And, and they're, on, they're only at the set times in the program. And they're only on issues relating to the theme. And initially, the topic is selected by you, but you might find that I actually change the topic on you. So, <laughs> so uh, and, and if I find that the person who does get personal feedback is either angry or resistive, then basically I'll just say, no, I'm not going to talk any more about that and move on because um, I'm not interested in trying to assist person who's resisting the assistance. Does that make sense? So I have no interest in doing that. If you are asked to be involved in the personal feedback sessions, if you can just make sure, we'll, we'll let you know uh, an hour before, um, if you could just make sure you hear five minutes before they start because we just need to show a few things about microphone and where you'll be sitting and things like that. Does that make sense? And there's a few rejigs that we have to do to our setup here to make it work. So um, that we, we do that in the 20-minute in the break. That that is that when you're out having the 20 minute break, that's when we set up our our gear for the feedback. Now there's also you notice a music music program. Uh, Kate was there tonight. You, did those of you enjoy her music? Yeah. Where is where is you? where is Kate? <laughs> there she is. Thanks, Kate. <coughs> so feel free to donate to her. She, they're doing that uh, as a volunteer, but. But obviously she's got a donation box with her, that, so feel free if you enjoy that to give her a little donation. She's like a busker. <laughs> and Fabio will be doing it, uh, Fabio Tolly will be doing it on Monday. Now I'm not sure about Thursday at this point, um, but he might be back for Thursday as well. And so, so 
But what we would like to you to do, the venue would like you to do this if possible, is to fill out these two, these, this form, which we'll have up the back here, if you are interested in doing it on Monday or Thursday, if we, we'll confirm on Monday whether Thursday will be happening, and then whether you'd like to be involved or have breakfast, breakfast on the final Sunday here. Now, the reason why we're asking that is so they can get enough food, because the last uh, event we actually did this, but we still ran out of food. So, um, so it'd be nice if you make sure you let um, them know. So that list will be up the back. Some of you have already got your names on there, which is great. Now, Mary and I will be around for the last breakfast on Sunday. So we'll be here just to say goodbye to you and, uh, and see you off. Say... <laughs> They say an hour, and uh, and and so if you'd like to be, you know, around when we're around there, that's your opportunity to to see us off to say goodbye. Um, so that will be up the back, and I'll just remember to put that up back after the after the presentation. Thanks. Thanks, Linda. What time is breakfast on Sunday? Um, I don't. Th I, th I think they open at seven a.m. and it's anywhere from seven through to about ten or something. Um, so, I'm not on this campus. So, yeah, anybody can come. Um, so, just what time is the group gathering? It doesn't matter. Well, Mary and I are usually over here about eightish or something, but I don't know when everybody else will be here. But usually, other people will be there. Some some are earlier and things. So, yeah. It won't be like a group, it'll just be like everyone sitting around chatting, yeah. So my suggestion is, well, it depends on who you want to chat to as to when, <laughs> when you arrive. <laughs> um, obviously we've got the water up the back, which you know about and I've talked to you about. Um, oh, if you're sharing, who, who's sharing a room with a stranger? Someone you don't know? If you're in that... Uh, yeah, like a house, yeah. Yeah, f those of you who are doing that, can you be particularly mindful of looking after each other and caring, you know, caring for your own space? Because obviously, you know, that's a great opportunity for you to love each other and care about each other and to not sort of pester each other or annoy each other and give each other space and things like that, which are all very important, which you're going to need some space and time if you actually do do your homework. So. You, you know, it would be great if you could just care for each other in that, in that situation. Did you organise them through Rui's website? Yeah. yeah. So that was great, wasn't it, that Rui did that? He, he was in last week's group, actually, so you would have met him there, but if you were there. Um, but he's from Portugal, and so, yeah, so it was lovely that somebody from overseas decided to arrange that. All right. I think they are the main things that Mary wanted me to mention all right, yep. Okay, so, okay, Jennifer, let's, uh, let's ask Jenny down the front here, and then straight back behind. If we, um, if we, yeah, let's, let's deal um, with the questions and then we'll... Is there any um, ethical or difficulty with bringing food onto the premises and eating it at no. Nope. In that sh um, shop area where they sell food? Um, it's not unloving to do that? Well, no, they, they have no trouble with that. We've asked the venue that. Okay. So they, they have no Just trouble with that. The venue has been really good with us and really flexible. We knew what your needs would be and, and so we were quite, you know, you know, most venues would have limitations here and limitations there and so forth, which makes it all very difficult. Uh, this venue doesn't have any limitations, so... Um, as long as you look after their f f facilities and so forth, there's no real limitations. Uh, of course, I think if you're off-site, then they might not enjoy you jumping in their pool or whatever, but, but aside from that, you know, with regard to food and stuff like that. And, and in fact, the, the venue here is open for food on those particular days where Kate and Fab are singing, as well as the Sunday morning, so, so for brekkie. And they do have some vegan options, although... They've been, uh, that's the only thing, there's a little resistance to vegan around Noosa, it seems. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, there's, it's taken a while for them to warm to that idea. But aside, but aside from that, everything's fine. Yep. 
straight behind, Joanne, you wanted to ask? Um, will the chairs stay set up all, all the time through the whole presentation? So there's no need for us to move our chairs at any time? No, we, we will ask you, because you're the last group uh, and we have to pick up after you, right at the end, we're going to do a group photo. And before that group photo, we are going to ask you to tidy up your chairs and put them to the one side there. Because what happens is we've got to very rapidly the next day after you've left, so we'll only be around uh, on that Sunday to around 10 or 10.30, because after that we've all got to be in here uh, tidying up all of our gear, because we've got to be out that night. Uh, so we've got to pack everything up and get it in the van that day. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep. Graham, thanks. And then up the back. Um, for outsiders, what parking options do we have? Good question, Graham. I, I don't know what happened to the previous lot, um, but like there are visitors parking here. Uh, you'll see different parts, but there's not a lot of it. So, um, so I'm sure it's going to mean some parking sort of along the roads or, or so forth. I'd say, yeah, yep. But it's it's okay to park inside if there's a space. Yeah. Yeah, but but not in not in the obviously each uh, of the um, rooms have their own parking space, so don't park in people's parking spaces. But there are visitors' parking spaces which are separate to the rooms, and they, and they're fine to use that. But that you know obviously there's not a lot of it. So yep, yep. And Jennifer, straight behind. I did actually ring the resort and ask them about parking yep. and she said if there's space out the front in front of reception, you can use it. Um, but as you said, not There's not a lot there. of it. Yeah. There's only like enough for five to ten cars, so mm. yeah. If we go up the back, you wanted to ask? Yeah, I just want to say there's heaps of parking on that side. There's a little strip uh, before the bed forest. <laughs> There's a heaps of parking. Down this side here? Yeah. Behind the resort. Oh, yes, be, but you can't, can you get down there from behind, from down that road? Yeah, you can, you can, you can get in. Yeah. No, the, ra the roundabout's here. Yeah, so it's opposite. Yeah. Well, well, I didn't know there was a back roundabout, but anyway. <laughs> apparently there's a back roundabout, and behind there there's heaps of parking. So, so, yeah, okay. So. Hey, um, you mentioned before if the, your children make any noise to leave, is there any like grey area of a little bit of noise or <laughs> no noise? <laughs> well, you've got to remember that, that other people are going to find it hard to concentrate while they're making, you know, any noise that's louder than a gurgle really. Um, so, yeah, Michaela, I feel just be conscious of that. Yeah. But a gurgle is okay? Like a quiet gurgle? <laughs> You're going to have to exercise your discretion All right, cool. and use your will rather than asking me to or arbitrate. Um, but I will, if it gets noisy, I will address it with you, like I did last time, remember. So your, your view of what's too much and my view are very different from each other, aren't they? <laughs> if you go by last time. Yeah, thank <laughs> yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Come down. Um, what about if we want to make a gurgle? Is there any place for us <laughs> to go? Because um, I'm not on site, but is there anywhere that we can go? Is it okay to just find a quiet spot and sit there? If you if you find yourself triggered in the group, you mean? Yeah. If you if you there were some people last week who just needed to go out and have a good cry, but but when we're here, you'll find everything outside's pretty quiet, so you can pretty much find enough any quiet space out there. The, w the weekends are a bit more busy than during the week, so you'll find if you're out there in the weekend, then you might want to try and find a real private space, um, you know, and go or go for a walk or whatever. If you if you're going to have a cry, but um, in the middle of the week, there's not as many people staying here, so so generally it's a bit bit quieter and and therefore you have more tolerance. Mm. Yep. Yep. Any other questions you have? Thanks, Glenda. Two questions. Is it safe to leave our goods here overnight in this room? Um, we'd ask that you take them out overnight because the room get cleaned. Okay. Yeah, so. And are you updating hard drives this I am. week? I am. 
And mine's not formatted. Is that a problem? No, you just got to tell me whether it's PC or Mac and I can format it for you. Any hard drives, just leave up on the back desk where you picked up your on the desk on the on the right hand side where you picked up your name tags and probably many of you will find it's better to take your name tags off and put it on the desk before you go because that way you won't lose them <laughs> home somewhere and um, so my suggestion is to do that but if you've got drives to to copy then please leave them at the back and i can copy them yep Teresa, you wanted to I, I have um, facility to be able to assist with that if you need. Yeah, you wouldn't have exactly the latest copy I've got though, so it's better that people get the copy from myself. Talia, thanks. <coughs> um, how big do the hard drives have to be? Is it one terabyte or two? They have to be over one terabyte, so okay. yeah, we're hitting one terabyte now, so they have to be one and a half or two. Yep. Yep. Sandra, thanks. Uh, ben, over here, thanks. Um, for those like me that don't know what love looks like, what does being unloving actually looks like? When well, that's one of the things we're going to share with you this week. So that's part of the program, Sandra. Relax, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry so much. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Good. You know, so, so yes, we're here to hear, learn about love, and that's what Sandra just asked is a very good question, isn't it? Whose definition of love is it that we're here to learn about? And and the problem with the world's definition is, the world's definition of love is what you're currently living and what the world's currently living, and is it working out too well? Doesn't look like it. So it's obviously not that definition of love that we're looking at. So what we want to do is define some of those things or help you go through the process of defining them or even better, help you find out what God feels the definition of love is, which is our main focus this week and for the entire program, actually. So remember, the entire program's theme is an education in love and this week is this subject, developing my will to love. And it's a very, very important subject and, and so important, in fact, that we've decided to put it first, which tells you how important we feel it is. We feel the majority of you have yet to understand the power of your will and the power of your will used negatively or positively even. And many of you actually in this audience have three primary problems with your will. The first primary problem is that many of you are willing to give up your will to anybody who puts a bit of pressure on you. So this is a problem. This means that you don't have a clearly defined idea or concept of how to use your will. Does that make sense? The second problem many of you have is you give up your will to spirits. And many of you are in that boat. Some of you do it because of the power that you get from it and what those spirits give you. And, and therefore it tells you that you feel that you need that. Right, so you're giving away your will to other people without even really understanding the terrible side effects of that. And the third thing is that many of you in this audience are also impacting upon negatively the will of others frequently and often wanting power and control over others, which means that you do not understand the importance from God's perspective, the use of your will. So we're going to look at some of those issues during the week with you as well. And you'll find that there are a whole heap of things that impact upon the use of your will. But, but we're going to ask you to do three things this week, really. The first thing is to analyse honestly how you're currently using your will. And we're going to point out some very basic facts about that to you. Some things that you may not have said before, but you may not have considered them in the way that we're going to actually present them to you. The second thing we're going to do is look at your fear and how your fear impacts upon the use of your will. And this is where many of you give away your will indiscriminately to people who have no, who, who you don't even know many times. You will give your will away to those while at the same time with people you know and can possibly trust, you don't let them influence your will at all. 
Right? So this is where I see many of you giving away your will to spirits and nasty people, doing what people demand of you at the drop of a hat, while at the same time, people who are trying to encourage you to use your will in a positive direction, you ignore them. So the, these are areas where we're going to work on in the second two days. And then in the third two days, we're going to examine your desire to actually use your will, to develop your will. So we're going to look at actually engaging your will, what, it, what it's going to look like, what it's going to feel like, and the rewards of doing so. So that's our general program for the week. And, and we feel pretty confident that you will learn a lot through the week in terms of in terms of what's being presented to you yeah okay well if you have no further questions then that's the end of our housekeeping session for this evening and we're looking forward to spending some time with you this week and presenting the actual information to you so so we're going to begin tomorrow tomorrow at 10 30 so if you can be here just a touch earlier than that we will play a little classical piece <laughs> beforehand um, and that we give you an indication that we're just about to start. So every time you hear a little bit of music beforehand, it means that just about the start of session, if you can come in, because we'll be starting immediately that the, that particular piece of music is finished. Now, those music pieces, many last week asked what they were, <laughs> and we don't actually, we will not be having them in the recordings because obviously there's copyright issues and all those kind of things with that kind of music. So, uh, but if you do want a list of the music that we're going to use, then we probably will put some kind of a list up at some point as to the different classical pieces and where they came from. Does it make sense? There's not just classical music, though, it's other music as well. Havana? Um, this question might be better for tomorrow, but I was just going to ask um, what would be an example of giving away your will? And why don't you leave that to, to yeah. our program? Yeah. yeah. But it, it, you, many of you do it frequently. I notice many of you pandering, for example, to angry people. That's you giving away your will to an angry person. You do it. Why? Because you're scared of them. And so you give your way what you will. Many of you do it with a condescending person. A person's condescending to you and then you think you've got to impress them and, and somehow. And so you do something to impress them. But often you, it's not you're giving away your will in that moment. You don't want to do those particular things, but you do it anyway, just to impress them. So, you know, there's many ways where we give away our will. And, and in fact, the, the underdeveloped will is the single biggest problem that the majority of you have in engaging your will to love. It's a, it's a, that's why we're covering it first. It's the single biggest issue that most of you have in terms of changing your life. So that's why we're covering this material first. Yeah. Yep. Good day. All right. Well, we'll see you tomorrow morning, 10.30. Thank you. Thank you.